So I'm Jason Taylor. I am primarily working in planning, um, but my, my focuses over the years have been in urban design and transport planning in particular. Um, so what I'm going to talk a bit about tonight is, is about placemaking and street design. Um, the design manual for urban roads and streets, and that's probably what I'm primarily uh, known, for, known for doing and having travelled around the country, um, collecting examples and, and looking at work that's done, done in different places. What can be achieved through the application of DMERS? Now, DMERS is a, it's a big 200-page technical manual, but when it comes to transforming towns, transforming streets and transforming spaces, it, it it's really is a document that uh, opens doors for communities and allows you to do things that not so long ago a lot of people would have wanted to tell you, you can't do that. No, sorry, you can't do that. You can't do this. Um, and then just some of the challenges uh, uh, through its application. So uh, Mary earlier tonight mentioned the word placemaking and I apologise, it, it's a bit of a jargon, it's a bit of a, a buzzword in, in urban design, but um, it, it really it, it is about finding out about what makes your town, your village special. What, what, what are the characteristics of it that you can build upon? And you're really lucky here in Kells because you've got so much, you've got so much history. Um, you know, it, it's something which, which, which a lot of places would be very, very envious of. Um, so the, you can see there that the quote from the project for, for public spaces, placemaking inspires people to collectively reimagine and reinvent their spaces at the heart of every community and, and a lot of what we've heard tonight is about that. Um, but again, placemaking means different things to different people. It, it's all about experience and identity. When you go to a place, what are the things that you remember from that place? What makes it special? Um, there's a graphic there, you can see there's it, it, key attributes, intangibles, measurements, as designers, we, we, we love measurements, we, we love things that are physical, they're easy to manipulate, they're easy to change, but it's the intangibles that, that are very, very difficult uh, uh, to, 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 to come to grasp with, and that's where the, the local community really does come in. You know, it's, it's, about, it's about being neighbourly, welcoming, it's about the street life, as I said, it's about the memories, the, the, all those different things, but again, a lot of these things, it's proximity, it's walkable, it's how well connected it is, um, you know, it's about how much pedestrian activity is there, what sort of shops what can you buy, does it feel safe, and, and that's a key element, of course. Um, so just look, a couple of, of, of graphics there, which just basically outlines it in two, two simple images. On, on the left-hand side, somewhere which has a low place value. Uh, value. Now, this, this should have a higher place value. You've got a church there, which is a, 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 a focal point for the local community. Um, it's an old market square, it used to have quite a vibrant function, but now it's, it's just a car park. It's just blacktop, as we call it, asphalt and concrete. On the right-hand side, now I've, I've, I've named it there because you, you can see that the blue sky, the man there in the shorts and the t-shirt, the kids playing in a water feature, that is Ireland, that's Dundalk, it's just down the road. Um, but, you know, again, a high place value, I mean, that... that, that it, it makes the centre of town a destination. It's a, a place that people want to go to, it's a place that people want to spend time in, and it's a place that people have a good experience in. Um, so placemaking and street design. So why are streets important? Well, streets are actually the largest component of the public domain. If you measured it all out, there's more streets in the public domain than there, that there are parks and all other sorts of places. Most of your time will be spent in the street when you're out in public. Um, and streets are critical to the image of a place, so I'm sure you'll, you recognise the images on the right-hand side. If you, if, and that's just from a simple Google search, historic postcards from Curls, and that's the images you get. You get images of the street. So street is absolutely critical to your identity. Um, but streets have to do a lot of things. They have a place function, they also have a movement function, and we're all very familiar with the movement function problem we have in, in recent decades is the movement function has become overly dominate, dominant. We're, we're, we're overly focused on parking, we're overly focused on traffic to the detriment of place. And this is just a, a couple of snapshots from, um, from Dublin where the focus has been on moving vehicles and that has implications where pedestrians often become an afterthought. You can see the, the image on the bottom right hand side there, that's near where I live. Now there's excess space in the carriageway there, there's, there's, there's space there which is not needed for vehicles 
and you can see pedestrians are marginalised to the fringe, obstacles are put in their way and so forth. And, and again, talking about measurements and designers, you have a footpath there which is below minimum standards. Um, on the right hand side, barriers, that, street, that uh, image on the bottom hand left side there, that's from Tara Street in Dublin. Um, Tara Street's not doing well. It's, it's very low grade of frontages, a lot of vacancy and so forth. But again, excess space, pedestrians forced to come off the footpath and walk onto the carriageway. Um, anyone who's walked around with kids, you know that, that that's not what you want to be doing. Um, image in the top middle there, you can see where a very easy trip from A to B across that yellow line, you've got to actually make one, two, three, four separate crossings. Now there's junctions in, in Dublin, and, and lucky you don't have that here, where it could take you five minutes just to get across the road. I mean, you can walk nearly half a kilometre in five minutes. And Dublin is an absolute sea of signs, guardrails and bollards and so forth. So that's the impression that a lot of people will get when they come to Dublin, is, is that, you know, and, and a lot of towns and, and, and so forth, is what defines it, what is your identity. And, and movement has, has, has taken away a lot of that. Um, so a lot of what we did with Dimas came from this increasing awareness that place and good design matters. Um, and you know, if streets are perceived as unsafe for any reason, people will retreat to the safety of their cars and or go elsewhere. So the impact of traffic fast, the last thing you want through the century of your town is fast moving traffic. Um, and if you can just skip all the way down to the bottom there, the dominance of cars, and again, that's one of the biggest contributors to the decline of the traditional main street or, or shopping street and so forth. And again, there's other issues there. There's, there's issues of, of social equity. Um, believe it or not, most people do not own a car. Um, and, and, and again, how you design streets is, is very important because um, it's been shown in study after study that drivers behave and the speed that people drive at in particular is, is actually primarily determined by their reading of the road, what they see in front of them. Speed limits are secondary. It's, it's what they see in front of them which counts. And, and when we design roads that are focused on moving traffic, you can see here from the Road Safety Authority where you've got on average, you've got 60% of drivers driving in excess of the posted speed limit. So DEMOS came along, it, it, there was a realisation that there is a, there's a gap there's, the, the, that we need to, to re-look at, at, at the way we're doing things. Um, the pro one of the problems was is that conventional traffic management and, and um, uh, documents focused on movement only and the design standards that were being used are actually the same as those which are being used for, for motorways and, and large highways and arterial roads. So it's it is a bit of a one-size-fits-all. Your main street, your local streets are a completely different environment. They need a completely different set of standards. Um, so, so Dima's, and I have a copy here, it's a big document, 200 pages, but it is, it is it is written so that it is to be universally accessible and again it's something that you can use whatever task you're undertaking and we can go through a lot of this tomorrow it's something which will help you get there um, now it's, it's a national policy document um, it was launched in 2013 it's signed by uh, leo vradkra now tisha um, so again it, it, it's national policy to, to implement some of the things found in this document um, uh, Market Street, Castle Bar, if anyone's familiar with what it used to be like, um, and, and uh, on the right you can see, but what they did is they, they tr it was essentially a transfer of space and it was a traffic calming exercise and at the same time it was all about place enhancement. They widened footpaths, they changed the main street to a one-way system. Um, the, the pedestrian domain was increased by about 200, 300%. Um, on the, you have uh, one-way traffic now. There's still parking on the street there, but it's been rationalised, and it's, it's much. The traffic moves much slower. It's a much, much calmer environment. Um, and again, this is in Drogheda, and again, really just 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 down the road from here. You, again, you have this, this this transfer of space where footpaths were widened, vehicular carriageways were narrow, narrowed. Now, the the, the great thing about narrowing a, a, a vehicular carriageway is you're only giving the space which is required, you're not giving more than what is needed, in the same time it slows everything down. Cars drive up and down that street at about 15, 20 kilometres per hour, 30 tops, so it's a much, much safer environment um, for pedestrians. Um, and again, this is, this is what I was talking about, the, the DEMERS outcomes. Tra it's all about traffic management and safety. 
Um, the image there on the left, it, it, it's clearly a space for cars. Cars drive faster, drivers are far more aggressive. On the right hand side, it's Castle Bar. Again, that, 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 uh, there's a blurring of the lines. Where's the pedestrian space? Where's the car space? That slows everything down. If you just pave a street, it'll slow cars down by 10 kilometers per hour. If you do nothing else and just pave it alone, it'll slow everything down. So again, that, that idea of, of, of creating passive spaces where, where again, driver behavior changes dramatically when they enter these spaces. I mean, if you think your, yourself, your, your own space, when you're in somewhere like a car park, um, you drive slowly in a car park because pedestrians are mingling amongst cars and are walking around as well. You, you change your behavior, even though there's no speed limit. Technically, if it's, if it's a private car park, there is no speed limit. You're free to travel as fast as you want, but you don't. You behave um, as you know you should be. Um, again, your county clock is a good example. On the right hand side there, you've got uh, the Apple Market in Waterford. And, and this, is, this is something which has just changed very recently. And um, again, it was a space which, it, it had a nice, nice tree. It wasn't a bad space before, but it just wasn't quite performing as a community focal point as it could be. And you can see there's quite a dramatic structure that they've put in, in there. But what is, is very different about that is this, this shared space. And you can see there's a lack of delineation between the footpaths and the carriageway and so forth. And, and again, this just, just changes the way drivers behave within the space. Um, so again, you can see, Pedestrians start to have priority. You have a driver coming up to an area where pedestrians are walking across. The driver sits there, waits patiently for the pedestrians to go through, and then when there's a gap, the driver goes through. Now, that, that's a complete change in behaviour, and that's come about by design, which influences, as I said, the way people behave in the space. So there's space in Dundalk, and again, you have a square here. You have two sides for the square. Just something as simple as a strip of paving between the two sides of the square. This, again, slows everything down. You're coming into the town centre, your behaviour changes, and what happens is you start to get this environment where people are actually mixing with traffic safely because everything is so slow. Now, you're not going to do this on a 40, 50 kph road. That would be crazy. But when you're getting down to speeds of 20, 30 kph, it can be done safely, and you get all these places. It's the, it's the place enhancements which actually change the way the traffic behaves within the town centre. Um, again, Waterford, again, shared space, again, these, these were just black top streets, very narrow footpaths. They've been completely changed and completely reimagined um, in recent times. And this is just a, a, a quick little uh, five-stage graphic which just shows you what you can do. Stage one, you know, you just tidy up. That's easy. That's the, that's the low-hanging fruit, the bollards, the sandwich boards, the signage. Declutter the streets somewhat. Um, again, Next, start to, to merge things, so you start to consolidate functions, you know, you start to, to put things together all onto the one pole and so forth. Then you start to rethink traffic management, you look at traffic calming, you look at uh, widening footpaths, narrowing the vehicular carriageway, as I said before. And then, stage five, you completely recreate the street, so you've got a completely different type of space now, a completely different experience for all users within it. Pedestrian and cyclist mobility has increased greatly, traffic is calmed, it's, it's a much more passive space and I think we, we talked before about uh, the, the vertical and the horizontal, it's, it's the same sort of thing we sort of talk about the walls and the floors and, and, and this is where things such as, you know, if you're going to, to do up your shop fronts, you, you're going to declutter, you're going to beautify your town, you've got to think about the floors and not just the walls. Car parking. So car parking is probably one of the most vexed issues. Um, it's certainly something which we dealt with all the time in, in Australia, in Dublin, in all the, all the towns and villages I've been around, all the country. Parking is probably one of the most vexed issues. But believe it or not, it's actually one of the easiest to actually solve because, again, it's a design issue, it's a physical issue, it's something you can tangibly do. So car parking, it is really all about finding a, a balance. That, now, one of the difficulties about cars is they take up a lot of space. You think everywhere you go with your car, um, and in Dublin, commuting and so forth around the country, it's one person per vehicle. And that person is travelling around with an empty armchair, an empty couch in the back, an empty trunk behind that, and the equivalent of a kitchen table in front of them. So they require a lot of space. Too much in the public domain and, and it just becomes saturated. I mean, car parks are not attractive 
places and um, you probably recognise from the right hand side up there that's uh, an oven and again millions of euro put into a, a, a fantastic civic square and it just becomes saturated with, with parking so you just get yourself a fancy car park unfortunately. Um, things that, again free unrestricted parking, low turnover, something you've got to come to, gr to, gr to, to, to grasp with if it is free and it's all day, it starts to be filled up with, with, with employees and, and so forth. But again, it's, it's something to come to grasp with. But again, we know parking, it needs to support business. On-street parking, um, DEMOS is all about on-street parking. You, it really does play an important role in traffic calming. It provides an important role in pedestrian comfort because you have a buffer between yourself and a busy road with a, low, with, with a line of, of parked cars. Can promote activity, of course. People can pull over in and out of shops, and, and cars are important to have too around, particularly at night. You want cars coming through an area. Um, but again, it, it's, it's about rationalisation. Um, this is Dunleary, and you can see on the left there where they, they've lost a few spaces, but they've gained significant public domain improvements. And you can see there how much that vehicular carriageway is narrowed. It's still two lanes, it still carries exactly the same amount of traffic, it's just calmer. Um, and there's no loss of capacity. Um, this is Dungarvan. You can see there on the right what it used to look like. I mean, it was a sea of line marking and, and, and signage and so forth. Again, all been rationalised, um, all stripped down to, to, to the bare minimum as such. Um, and again, the same thing there. Now, again, it's, it's, it's in the centre of town. There's still a lot of parking there. Um, it, it does seem somewhat saturated. So, you know, you, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about it because, you know, it, 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 a lot of money's gone into that space, but still is just a car park. But the great thing about a space like that is that, you know, if you're holding an event or you're holding a market, you can move that parking elsewhere or strip it back a bit, and then you've got a great space for, for those sorts of activities and festivals and so forth. Um, where support. There's no shortage of on-street parking through Westport, and it's been mentioned a few times, but this is just one worth noting. You can see where the car park is actually on the back lot, and when you come out of that, you walk down the, these series of lanes. Down those laneways are little businesses, the barber shop, the cafe, small art gallery, and so forth. They would not be there if it wasn't for that car park, so they're actually picking up on that footfall coming through to the main street. So again, this is, this is something to think about. Do you, are there spaces where this, this sort of thing could occur? Yep. So, look, just some of the challenges, and, and, and this is what we're talking about when it's placemaking. It's, 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 it's what we call a win-win approach, that you can have safer streets, you've increased mobility for pedestrians, you've enhanced place, placemaking, and you can have a much more prosperous town and village. All these things can, can, can be wrapped up together in the name of traffic management and, and car parking. Um, just a few statistics. This is just a place from the UK, one of the, the places which really pioneered this. And you can see uh, when they did all this sort of work, uh, the, the, the number of accidents decreased by 43%. It, 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 a phenomenal change. Uh, but look, change, it, 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 it's difficult, it takes time, there's, there, there's cultural, you know, public support, political will issues. You need professionals with the right skills. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of the examples I've shown you, a lot of the people who did that were told that they can't do this for various reasons. This is where something like this comes. You know, you, 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 are there any engineers in the room? Um, you can actually hit engineers over the head with this. It's, it's quite hard, but um, it, you know, it, 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 it's your friend. It allows you to do these sorts of things if you want to do them. Um, and again, again, a lot of us said that there's a lot of resources required, there's a lot of maintenance required in these sorts of things, but again, there's big payoffs um, if you get it right. Um, and I'll just finish up on this one. And, and, and again, Clonakilty has come up, and apologies, I don't have a great photo of Clonakilty because when I was down there, it was all under construction. But again, Clonakilty named best town in the UK and Ireland in 2017. And, and what it's really about, and I guess this, this, is, this is again the importance of local community in DEMA as we talk about having a design champion. And, and this is somebody on larger scale, high profile projects, that, you know, if they one person, a group of people that are just like a dog with a bone, just don't let go of the bone. You need someone to liaise with the community, liaise with the businesses, to, to bring it all together, to bring this, this vision together and ensure that vision is carried out right to the very end of the project and really to, to, to promote and sell the project. And as I said, question convention, Con conventional standards, conventional ways of doing things, conventional ways of, 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 of managing traffic are not going to get you the benefits that you could otherwise get. Thank you.